Hi guys, Squad here and welcome to my review of Beyond the Baltic Sea. This is SCS's latest map DLC for Euro Truck Simulator 2. It has over 13,000 kilometers of in-game roads to explore and covers countries such as Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Southern Finland and Russian territories. It has at least 25 new major cities as well as many smaller towns. It also includes lots of new 3D assets. There's lots to cover in this video, so let's get started. So, beyond the Baltic, where is it? What part of the world does it cover? Well, it's everything north of Kaliningrad here. Kaliningrad is actually a Russian territory. But apart from that, we then move into Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia, with a little bit smattering of Russia on the east side, before crossing over into the southern part of Finland. Now, as I mentioned in my 1.33 video, you've got Travamunda is a ferry link up to Baltic DLC, as is Kapelska and Nisham, though that's not a new city but this new link to vent spills is. So let's take a deep dive into the various parts of Beyond the Baltic's DLC. We'll start with Finland. Actually before we begin, a small disclaimer. I'm an English speaker and I don't know how to pronounce a lot of these city names correctly. So if you're a native speaker from these countries, I apologize in advance because I'm probably going to massacre the pronunciation of these city names. But I'm going to have a go. So, Southern Finland. We'll start up here in Pori. Pori and Olkiliota, which is this little town here. These are two small towns, almost situated on top of each other. They're coastal towns and they both feature industrial uh, pickup points, but not much else. If we then move south, we hit another coastal town called Nantali. Uh, Nantali is bolted on the side of Turku. It's a ferry town. It has a link to Kapelskar back over in Sweden here. There's also a petrochemical plant. In Turku, which is uh, quite a large city, it's spread out with industrial units scattered for miles around the major road network. There's also a Volvo dealer here and a garage and a couple of refueling points. Heading to the northern part now, this is uh, Tampere, I think that's how you say it. It isn't really much of a destination, but it does have a nice rest area, which is located here. And there's also a garage available to purchase and uh, a few industrial pickup points. But like I say, it is quite spread out and there's lots of little interconnecting roads that bypass Tempere. Uh, if we then move down through Route 12, we go to Lati. Uh, Lati is west of Kuvola and north of Helsinki. Now, Lati is mostly residential and office areas. There is a Scania dealership here and a few industrial pickup points. And there's also, interestingly, a horse statue. Continuing on Route 12 to the east, we have Kalvala. Uh, this is north of Kotka. It's industrial and farming areas with very little housing, but there is a garage available for purchase here. Kotka itself is a southern coastal town. It has a container port located just down here and it also has industrial areas with jobs but it doesn't have a ferry but it does have a rather interesting bell tower now over to the west is helsinki helsinki is a large city it also has a ferry port which is located here which has a combined ferry and container port there are connections from here to Tallinn and to Travmund. There's also a huge north circular road that runs around the city. What's odd about Helsinki is you mostly drive around it. There's nothing actually to visit within Helsinki itself. There's no inner city part to it. Without doubt though, that ferry port down in Helsinki is spectacular and well worth a visit. If you head out of Finland, you take Route 7 and this hits the border checkpoints here at Russian territory. I'll talk more about the border checkpoints later. That then becomes the M10 motorway. And the M10 motorway takes you into Viborg. This is the northernmost city in the map DLC in Russia, just west of St. Petersburg. It's a small, heavy industrial city, and the M10 motorway surrounds it around the north side. There's no garage here to purchase, but there is a fuel and maintenance depot. If you continue down the M10, that brings you into St. Petersburg. This is the easternmost city in the map DLC, and in my opinion, the jewel in the crown of the Baltic DLC. It's neatly split down the middle by the widest motorway we've yet seen in ETS2. 
And this city has not one, not two, but three twin spar suspension bridges that are quite spectacular. There's no fewer than five fuel stations here, large toll booths and high density apartments. Also over to the east is a forest area. If you continue down to the south, that will bring you to Luga. Uh, Luga is a small, mostly industrial city with very few homes. There is a garage here though that you can buy and there's maintenance and fuel and plenty of job pickup points. If you continue down south even more, that will arrive at Peskov. This thing is almost cut out of a forest. It's a high density city. It has a prominent uh, rail works here and there's a river cutting through the middle with three visible bridges. However, you can't actually use the bridges. There's also some crazy Russian roundabouts. It seems that in Russia, they have give way markers actually on the roundabout. So what that means is you have to give way as you're going around the roundabout to vehicles coming onto the roundabout. And by doing so, you block the exits, which increases the chances of the roundabout completely deadlocking. Like I say, it's a crazy Russian roundabout. Just to the west of St. Petersburg is Sovsnovby Bor. This is an industrial city which leads straight into Narva. At Narva, there's a border checkpoint because we're now leaving the Russian territory and entering Estonia. Narva itself is a very small town, nothing much more than a border checkpoint and a refueling area. It is, however, quite picturesque, with a rather lovely medieval castle by the river. If you continue west, that will bring you to Kunda. Uh, Kunda is a small pass-through town with some industrial heritage. It sits between Tallinn and Narva on the northern coast of Estonia. Continuing to more to the west, we reach Tallinn. Tallinn is a small city with a large ferry port connected to Helsinki. To the east is a large container port and a garage. You'll also notice there's a tram running through Tallinn and some rather lovely colourful apartments. There's a large airport as well with a rather unusual terminal design. There are some unique buildings here such as the rather nice Methodist church and there's also a port terminal which is quite nicely designed. Just to the west of Tallinn is Paldiski. Paldiski is a large town and has a very large port. It's located close to Tallinn and it has a Scania dealer. It has excellent road connections too. Route 4 goes south to Panu, Route 11 goes east to Tallinn. There's a number of job pickup points here and some nice landscaping if you know where to look. If you go south, you reach Panu. Panu is a small coastal town. It has a marina as well. There are no ferry links here, but you can get a job from the dock area. You can buy a garage and there are rural areas around it with plenty of farmland. Moving east from Panu is Tartu. Tartu is the central city in Estonia. It's very well connected by road links. There's multiple fuel stations here and a garage to buy. There's also a DAF dealer and half a dozen job collection points. It's quite flat here. Uh, there are suburban areas around the outside and a low-rise apartment block buildings inside. South of Estonia is Latvia. Uh, Latvia is connected both through Panu and through Tartu and also through Puskov, through the A2, the A3 and the A1 roads as you can see here. Now, Valmiera is uh, northeast of Riga, which we'll talk about in a second. Valmiera is open and flat. It has a football stadium, a church, a garage, and some apartments. There's also a radio tower here and a rather large industrial chimney. To the southwest of Valmiera is Riga. Riga is a large city. It's flanked by a river with multiple bridges, none of which can be used, apart from a single crossing near a hydroelectric dam. It has a rather nice town hall, assuming that's what it is, and the road network is strangely disconnected. If you notice about Riga, it has the A5 running all around the south side of it, but there are no actual roads going into Riga itself. There's a garage here and fuel stations, as you would expect. If we now go to the east of Latvia, we reach Rizekne. Rizekne is on the eastern side. It's a small town with a rather nice church. It has a garage that you can buy, a mechanic, and a couple of job pickup points. Just to the south of it is Daugavpils. Daugavpils is in the southern eastern part of, of Latvia. There are factories here. There are three churches, a garage to buy, some industry, and a cemetery. You don't see cemeteries very often in Eurotruck Simulator 2. 
there's also an operational tram. If we head over to the west side of Latvia, we come over to Liepia, or Liepia, I think it's pronounced. Liepia is one of the town ports in Latvia, one of two town ports in Latvia, this being the southern one. It has a ferry link down into Germany. There's a small self-contained city with housing and industry and good road connections to the north, east and south. To the north of it is Ventspils. Ventspils is a small town with a port that connects it to Kapelska and it has a rather large drawbridge here. To the south of Latvia is Lithuania. And if we start over here on the southwest part of it, on the coast is Klaipeda. This is a pretty coastal city. It has docks, but no ferry link implemented in ETS2, but it does have jobs available at the docks. There's an Aveco dealer here. There's a garage that you can purchase, a nice marina, some canals, and a boatyard. To the east is the city of Xiolie. This is situated in central Lithuania. It's a high density city with factories and many apartment blocks. To the west of the city are open fields and farmlands. Just to the west is Panevishes. I think that's how we say it. Panevishes. East of Xiolie. This is a small town. It's full of apartment blocks and it's a town that's clearly under construction. Even further east is a small town of Utenia. This is north of Vilnius and it's a low density town. It's quite spread out. It has a number of industrial pickup points scattered around it and it's very rural. To the south are the two final cities. We have Konas. Konas is situated to the west of Vilnius. Konas is a medium sized city. It's connected by a single road to the A1, which is kind of strange because I would have thought it would also have been connected to the A5. Now, Konas has a unique office building, which has the Lithuanian 1000 LTL banknote printed on it. It kind of wraps around the building itself. It also has a Renault truck dealer. To the very southeast is Vilnius. This has a large international airport, a Volvo dealer. It has mostly apartments, plenty of industry, and along the main A4 road running through it, there's Vilnius Tower. This is a TV tower. Finally, tucked away in the bottom left-hand corner is another little Russian territory. Uh, this one has Kaliningrad in it. You'll notice the border checkpoints as you go into Kaliningrad. Now, Kaliningrad has heavy industry. It has a visible large port, but no ferry links in ETS2. There's a garage that you can purchase, a Mercedes-Benz dealer, uh, power stations, lots of construction, and various industrial job pickup points. The Baltic DLC also brings a new gameplay element, that of the border checkpoint. These normally come in pairs, one on each side, so as you cross from one country to another, you'll have a border checkpoint on one country's side, you make a short drive to the other border checkpoint, you'll have to clear that one, and then you're allowed to drive through. The way it works is quite simple, you approach it a bit like you would a tow booth, bring your vehicle up to the border checkpoint, Stop on the marker and then it says to start the border check press enter so you press enter there's nobody actually here or anything it just says it's checking your documents there's no concept of failing either so a bit like the way stations in american truck simulator this is a nice little game feature but in practical sense completely useless because you can never actually fail the checkpoint so what are my closing thoughts on beyond the baltic dlc I think driving around the map, which I've done quite a bit of now, you get a real sense of Eastern Europe. Everything from the textures to the road signs, the individual details of each country are all present. The border checkpoint thing between the various countries is a nice little addition. But again, I would have liked to have seen some more gameplay play on that. Maybe, you know, a chance or the possibility for our passport to be invalid or potentially carrying goods which are not allowed, that kind of thing. Some kind of risk factor involved. The apartments are really well done, the buildings themselves, the houses, pretty much everything gives you a real sense of what it's like to drive through that. Think little details like the way the traffic lights are structured, some of them have like a white border around them. Other ones will have like a flashing green light, which I noticed when I first pulled up at them, I thought, why is the green light flashing? 
turns out that uh, in some countries it goes red, amber, green, and then it flashes green before it goes back to amber, then quickly to red. Just a different way of doing things, but it's details like that that you tend to notice when you're driving around different countries. It's another fine DLC, I'd say. It's quite a large DLC by all accounts. You get quite a lot of cities in this DLC and a lot of roads to drive. Definitely packs a punch, this one. Once again, though, if you're a Pro Mods fan, well, you're going to have some pain here because we'll now have to wait for the Pro Mods team to integrate what SCS has done in the Baltic States with what they already did in the Baltic States. And I reckon that could be well into 2019 before we see that. Apart from that, though, I would say this is well worth a purchase and once again expands the driving world of ETS2. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Please give me a thumbs up if you did. Until next one, take care and happy trucking.